Good afternoon, everybody. Ooh, it's good that I'm loud, so I'll just put it down here. Thanks for um, coming out today. I've had, uh, I've had a table out front, and I've had great uh, conversations with people stopping by. And uh, I come from a different industry, uh, been around crypto technology, ICOs for a while now, um, but the gaming industry, and I must say, you are as rabid as gamers, so I appreciate the enthusiasm when you're coming by the, the table and asking questions. Um, here to talk today about the Spire project, um, one of the most important things I've heard over the course of several years is you really need to take a look at the management team. We have a world-class management team working with Spire today. And we're here to talk about emerging markets. And I don't know how many people are aware of prepaid or uh, postpaid or unbanked. By show of hands, when I say unbanked, is it a familiar term? Do you? OK, good. Um, so I have a background also in prepaid cards here in the United States. Uh, helped create um, the Google Play channel uh, and a couple others with uh, some game cards and retailers like Best Buy. Um, Target and Walmart and helped really kind of foster the, the, the prepaid market or cash understanding and how important it is. And so that's what we're kind of talking about today and, and really with um, some of the folks we've hit that tipping point of where cell phones are now more prevalent in the world and most everybody has one versus having a a laptop or a computer, and this becomes important for a couple reasons. One is the, the cost of ownership for mobile devices are dropping dramatically on Android devices, and really, as you look at the population of the world and the billions of people that need access or using access today through their mobile phones, they used to use flip phones, they're now going to smartphones, and this is where we're looking to, with Spire, capture that audience through the, the mobile application that we're, we're looking to roll out. And really what we're doing is we're working with telecoms today and OEM manufacturers in those specific emerging markets, and we're preloading a wallet onto the device. So instead of having the customer have to search and do all the rigmarole and know which one to trust, we're putting a white label application on the phone for the OEMs and the telcos. So now there's a trust factor that the person who's bought the phone knows that this is going to be a quality product. And at the same time, we're leveraging the, uh, product, the, the application that's being loaded on the phone to help reduce customer support costs, as well as help the, uh, with the diagnosis on the back end of those phones and is what we're looking to do. And so the, there's a dashboard that is for the OEMs and telecoms, and so they can go in and easily look at, hey, we rolled out this new particular smartphone, this Android smartphone in this region. Here's how it's performing. There may be some issues, so we're helping them on that side. And then on the front side, we have a trusted, it looks like the brand, feels like the brand, and now we're also introducing these OEMs and uh, telcos to the dApps market, or where we would place curated apps inside the store for those telecoms and OEMs, and now they're able to kind of take profit or share in profit revenues uh, that come from these dApps marketplaces and such, and that'll be in the slide further down. And so on this slide, the most important part is just the second point. We're truly decentralized, and that's where we're really leveraging the the new technology that's coming out, or existing technology, I should say, it's not new, we're, we're familiar with it, we're down the chain now a little bit, but this now really is where we're trying to disrupt the market in these places by having the app and then truly using that. And then on the second point here, where you're looking at the independent of a bank and fiat, that's where we're also taking a major advantage right here. So that's what we're looking to do with uh, Spire. If you look at where we kind of stack up against our competitors, as far as cost of application and rolling it out, we're really looking at a model to drive down the acquisition cost. And this is where working with companies that you see here that we're already in the marketplace today, we have 1.2 million devices, we have 26 million under contract, and so we're making some nice headway. 
And this is some of the countries that we're, we're launching in or we have our devices in today and you can just get a little bit of like Samoa is the, the big one, but you can see some of the LATAMs in uh, Jamaica. Uh, we're really attacking this from that emerging market spot. And this is where I was talking about the, the cost of acquisition. So by us going and spending our dollars with our OEMs and telecom partners, we're really looking to reduce that cost down to, to the point of like 33 cents today, but even cheaper where we're gonna get down to 20 cents for acquisition costs. And then where we're looking at the, the revenue opportunity between uh, or introducing a revenue opportunity is in the App Store as well as with the, the crypto wallet and having that uh, ability that the telecoms and the OEMs have not been able to participate before. And this is important because they're being very squeezed in these markets and they're looking for new sources of revenue. And so when we're talking about adoption in these marketplaces, I was just reading an article today about Zimbabwe and... Uh, Kenya, and in 2017, prior, it was a cash-based economy, 80% uh, was cash, 20% was digital. And what they did is they made a countrywide decision uh, through the central bank to reduce fees. And so after 2017, where people in the country are going to bodegas and different places to pay for their power bills, now there's a whole host of solutions that are now digital. So it's 80% digital, 20% cash. Cash is never going to go away. It's very important to a lot of these countries. But with that rapid adoption, that's where we're looking for Spire to really make an impact and bring in new low-cost technologies. Because if you, if you follow money and how much it costs, you know, it's like $45 to wire money to a country. And in some cases, it may take six to 10 days. And using something like Spire in those countries where we could lower the cost sub $5, and then you look at it being delivered the same day, we've actually really started to make an impact in those regions. And that's, that's Spire. That's what I have to say today. Just kind of wanted to give you a quick intro into the emerging markets. And are there any questions? And she has a, there's a mic. If you, let me drop this. I'm gonna to go to the podium. <coughs> If you don't mind passing like that. Yeah, hi. So I had a question regarding, um, you mentioned Africa markets, right? Um, so like, for example, in Kenya and Tanzania, uh, they use M-Pesa, yes. which is the, uh, the, the phone credit, right? Right, tied and to the that, card. Yeah, and that's their currency. So now, how are you going to convince, or do you have to convince the, the local telecom providers, you know, that they have this, this system already working. You can pay for taxis with that and, you know, you can go pay your utility bills with that. So how will they benefit from, you know, like a Ripple wallet or a Bitcoin wallet or whatever? Or a Spire wallet. Right. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, you, to your, you're right. You know, right now, the, if you look at M-Pesa, that they have about 28 million users today. Um, and there's a, there's a high cost to using that, right? So, and it's, it's specifically tied to that SIM card on the phone. So we're looking at disrupting that market, right? So most people have a market leader in PESA and that particular region is one. So we're gonna be, you know, when we're going and talking to the telcos, but you know, you can't get into an app marketplace today on a smartphone, right? And there's revenues to be shared with, with that type of uh, wallet application as well as a marketplace application. So that's what we're doing. We're bringing that to the, the market plus when you look at the white label application that we have on the phone, we're also providing uh, some extra services. So one would be uh, if they're illiterate and they can't read, there's pictures on, hey, I'm using my Android phone that I just went from a flip phone to a smartphone, I can't take pictures. And so what we're doing is we're going to be offering some extra services either through pictures or voice or with chatbot that we can help those people solve their problems before they actually have to call the call center. And so there's a reduction of cost there. On the back end, I was having a great conversation earlier with a gentleman at the table, and he was talking about analytics. And a lot of the, the telcos today, if they're using analytics to their benefit, they can actually make more money. So you, you can buy the phone, get a month of talk time, if you allow them to look at your analytics. And with our dashboard on the backside, 
we have that capability to provide some more data. So we're, we're bringing some extra tools and features to the market to compete with some of the ones that are already out there. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, thank you. There was another question? Or did he leave? All right, you guys are, any other questions? Yes, right over here. Okay, I'll, I'll repeat it. Is using the cell phone as part of this uh, crypto wallet essentially um, taking advantage of a, of a hardware wallet solution? You know what I mean? A, that, that piece of hardware that you need in order to verify that it's you and that it can't get stolen, or is that, is that not? The, you could lose your phone, but then there's, an auto, you know, there's a recovery process to, to get, you know, you, you don't lose your wallet, right? You don't lose any currencies that you have. You ha there's a way to uh, recover that if you've lost your phone or if it was stolen. Mm -hmm. uh, just like the, the current application in the market today, so you don't lose it. But it's essential for the, the mobile phone to be that deployment platform because most everybody has one. And what we're trying to solve is that you're, you're trying to send money to somebody in market um, or in that emerging market, and it's a family member, you're working at a mine, you want to send it back to your family, or even um, you know, it gets a little more complicated if someone in the U.S. is sending money to somebody um, in, in Kenya. But you know, those are the, the things that we're trying to deliver through the, the mobile phone. So the mobile phone is absolutely um, the, the key here mm -hmm. because it's everywhere. Yes, sir. What do you mean when you say truly decentralized? Well, we're, we're leveraging, you know, and I'm going to, I'm a sales guy, so forgive me, I'm going to go off script a little bit, and then the guys back at the home office will cringe um, because, you know, sales guys aren't allowed to talk about the technology. Um, so we're, we're leveraging what's in place today, and, let, and that's a very deep question, so let me, I can come back to you, and I'll take your, your information and uh, give you the exact details on it, so that way I don't get <laughs> get uh, harangued back at the office. Any other questions? Okay. If you want to just yell yeah. out, and I'll, I'll, yeah. I can so, repeat it. So my question is similar, though, because yeah. you talked about a dashboard on the back end, right, for the OEM. Right. Um, okay, but if it's, if it's a decentralized thing, I don't want them to be able to monitor my data, right? So that's the point of a wallet is that it's decentralized. Well, the wallet is decentralized, but the application, yeah. Right, so there's an application that's going to be preloaded where the wallet resides. And so in that application, it's, that's not the uh, decentralized part. So there is no tracking of any of the wallet information. But as far as tracking, hey, the, the cell phone, uh, it's a brand new cell phone that this particular OEM had launched in the marketplace. The diagnostic data that they get on the database or off of the phone is what they would be receiving. It wouldn't be any of the wallet information. So the wallet was going to be independent of the application. Yeah. Yes, sir. There is a Spire protocol, and I would, I would point you, I have um, brochures at the table, and I can take you, there's a white paper, uh, and you know, happy to point you to the website to get more details. Great question. Any others? Thank you for listening. I appreciate your time. Have a great rest of the show. Thank you.